Hey everyone, I've got kind of a little bit of an unboxing slash study video. I know in Costube you often see people do videos where they get antique garments and then they do overviews of them and they go through them and look at all the construction and stuff. And I always really enjoy those videos, so I thought I would do one of those today for some uh, garments that I just recently acquired. However, it's a little bit different. Um, I actually have two uh, Juban, which are the underlayer of the kimono uh, ensemble. Uh, and I personally find it really difficult to imagine cultural garments or construction uh, styles if I'm not able to see them in front of me. So I thought it would be really good to get a couple of those in and be able to look at them and see how they're made and really get into it instead of relying on, you know, the couple of very nice sources, but uh, it's not the same if you can't really see them yourself. Uh, I've got two Juban to go through today. I've got a regular, probably would be worn with a casual outfit, and then I've also got a furisode juban with longer sleeves, and they're both constructed a little bit differently. Um, I got these from an overseas uh, vendor called Kimonoya, I think. I'll put them up somewhere over here so you can see them and link them in the description. But if you're interested, uh, both of these are lower quality. They do their grading uh, by letters A, B, C, D. The Forisore kimono is D quality. Uh, it is very heavily stained. It is basically unwearable. It's a little gnarly, which you'll see in the video. And the other one I think was either C or D quality and it's a, I think, cotton kimono. Um, it has some stainage on it. It would probably be wearable, hypothetically, but it definitely has a lot of signs of wear and is also, I think, going to be way, way, way too small for me since both of these garments are designed for smaller body types than I have. But we're going to jump on over. I've never done an unboxing video like this before, so I'm um, a little new to it. I hope you don't mind if there's any weird angles or technical difficulties or anything. I don't have a great space for it. I'm, I cleared off my work desk to do this, but uh, I hope that you enjoy this and get some uh, useful information, which I hope I also will. So let's go. All right, we are at my table. Got my little cup of tea. I've set it over here in the corner. Hopefully it doesn't cause any problems. Um, I do have a lot of sun coming in through my window, so hopefully that doesn't affect anything too poorly. Okay, this is the, I think it's a cotton juban. They came to me very nicely folded and very pretty looking. And I immediately undid the folds and to look at them because I wanted to know. Uh, so they are much more haphazardly folded now and I apologize for that. But let's go ahead and take a look. I think we're gonna start up at the head and work our way down. So we are going to unfold it, unfold the sleeves, and one thing that I think is really delightful about these two juban that I got is that they both appear to still have the Han Eri uh, sewn onto them, uh, which is very cute, especially because you can see the hand stitching from where it was sewn on, on the inside. Um, and it is not sewn on very well. <laughs> you can see the stitching here is pretty wide and then you know, over here they've taken some even bigger stitches uh, and it does not cover the uh, Eddie, which is the collar basically at all on the inside. It comes maybe halfway. Um, and as a reminder, the Haneri is the piece of fabric that's put over the base Juban collar uh, and then an eddy shin, which is a collar stiffener, gets inserted into um, that to help it hold its shape and keep it from crumpling on under the weight of the other kimono um, at the back of the collar. This one appears to be some sort of uh, white, uh, like jacquard abstract print, maybe meant to have been roses or something. Um, but I will probably try and pick off some of this to see. Um, just because I am curious. So on the inside, there's some sort of interfacing from the look of it. Let me see if I can show this to the uh, up close camera. There's some sort of stiffening agent inside of it that's yellowed and it's not 
sewn in very well. The collar appears to be very, very loosely blind stitched. There's quite large gaps between the stitches. Um, so this has kind of wiggled its way out and is peeking out. Um, I'm not sure what the circumstances of this kimono were before I had it for obvious reasons, uh, but it definitely looks like it's a little haphazardly sewn. It might have been made at home by someone, or it could just be one that was um, a little bit more quickly produced. It looks like it has some machine stitching, but some of it's quite wide, um, probably to make it faster to produce. So it's a little hard to um, get a bead on what the circumstances of this were before it was in my possession. There's also some reinforcement stitching up here for, for some reason. Don't know what those are. I think it's because the uh, tacking on the uh, eddy, the collar, started to come off here and they wanted to hold it in place. Um, frankly, I might unpick some of this to get a good look at it. Uh, oh, oh my gosh, look! It's, uh, it's got embroidery. I Maybe this was uh, someone's name or something, but it's got some very cute little embroidery up here. Um, if you can read Japanese, or you know what this might have been, let me know. I'm very curious. Um, I, I don't know enough to know if this is supposed to be words or if it's symbols or what, but if you think you know what that says, uh, let me know. And then obviously it is very stained along the collar. There's a lot of use. Whoever wore this previously got a lot of wear out of it. Um, but it is uh, a more casual style of Juban. It's got a half width collar, um, which means that this collar would have been worn outright as it is right now, not folded over. Um, more formal kimono, and I believe some uh, Juban uh, have full width collars which needed to be folded over to be worn properly. Um, you see those on, on things like Pretty Soda and stuff. So this is very clearly a half width collar. It is very soft at the bottoms here, um, but up towards where the Han Eddy is sewn, it's got this stiffener like I was talking about, this yellow stiffener. Uh, I've really gotten absolutely no clue what that is. My guess is some sort of old interfacing. Anyways, so uh, other things starting up here at the back. It looks like the back seam was sewn with a like a floating feld stitch. One side is folded over on top of the other and uh, sewn down to keep the seam from fraying. It's a very thin seam. Uh, but it looks like it was done by machine. Then it looks like basically all of the body seams were done in that same style of a uh, folded over seam allowance. And then up here, oh wait, I stand corrected. Uh, over, oh no it is, excuse me, uh, the, the seams just got kind of folded up over here so it looked like there was, there was two seams. And then here is the sleeve. You can tell that this is a much more casual sleeve because it is quite small. This Juban had to have been made for quite a small person. As you can see, it is basically just the length of my forearm. <laughs> so it is, it is quite small. It is pretty short too. And interestingly, it opens up at the front all the way. I'm not sure if this is a thing for other Juban, if this is like something across the board or if this is just a unique thing about this, but in kimono usually the front is sewn up about halfway or two-thirds so that only the hand can come out of it, 
whereas this one is actually open all the way down, which is interesting. Uh, it is also lined, which is very unique. Um, I don't know if usually Juban like this are lined um, in the sleeves. Again, this is basically just what I can gather from, um, you know, viewing them and what I know from online. But frequently, to my understanding, Juban are completely unlined um, unless they're a very formal style. So the fact that these have this lining in the sleeves is very interesting. Um, it is very cute though. It it's, uh, looks like maybe some kind of like polyester silk um, or something, maybe a, like a printed habitat uh, or like a china silk, but it is, it is lined all the way through the sleeve on both sides. Um, looks like it was potentially uh, basically bag lined. Um, uh, it, my guess is that when it was originally being made, it was not like this where the lining stuck out from the inside. That probably happened over time and from storage. Um, but again, this might have just not been a very well-made Juban, so uh, who's to say? But uh, I'm going to go ahead and flip this inside out so we can get a good look at it. And again, these garments are probably not that old. Um, maybe 90s or 2000s, uh, it's hard to say, but they, they definitely are not like priceless antique garments. Uh, I think this one I got for maybe $20 and the Furisode Juban I got for like eight due to its damages. So these are very like bottom of the barrel kind of, um, prices because their age and their wear and all. So I don't want anyone to, in the comments to get upset with me for manhandling them a little bit. So it looks like this thing was sewn partially by machine, partially by hand maybe. No, I actually, I'm gonna say that it looks like this sleeve lining was actually sewn in almost entirely by hand. The stitches are very wide. Um, basically uh, impossibly wide for a sewing machine to have stitched them down. So, and the top is not stitched. It is just folded. It was cut on the fold. Yeah, so it looks like these sleeves were made in entirely by hand. Um, yeah, it looks like the outside was also sewn on by hand to the main body of the garment. It looks like the, um, the edge of it was rolled under and basted down on the body edge. And then the outside was stitched over that and then folded back. You can actually see some of that stitching peeking out right here. Hopefully that picks up on camera. I know this is very light colored, so it might be hard to see. But yeah, so the, I mean, that's very interesting. Um, I know some parts of uh, kimono have to be hand sewn just because of the way they look. Like um, I believe the inside of the eri when you're sewing it um, is almost always hand sewn just because it looks a lot better. Um, but I also don't know a whole lot about manufacturing of kimono and mass production. So I don't know what that looks like in comparison. If this was made by like a kimono tailor or if this was made by someone at home, it's, it's, I, I just simply do not know enough to, to be able to say. Okay. So we're going to move on from the sleeve. It's also fully open in the back got the, the more or less normal cut from the look of it where the body connects. There is usually a, a small gap left under the sleeve um, to make it easier to wear with uh, obi and for uh, kitsuke, which is getting ready. Uh, one thing I am noticing though, which is interesting is uh, the back opens slightly more than the front which is interesting. It could be worn that way because it's meant to be pulled down. So as the sleeve goes, it 
shifts a little bit, but it also could just be a manufacturing error. Who knows? Let's have a look-see at the bottom. So, from the outside, the bottom is uh, blind stitched, um, which is pretty traditional, I believe. Um, the Japanese hand sewing technique is called uh, unshin, which involves a little clamp hand and a very specific kind of thimble. Billy Matsunaga has a great video about that. Uh, a lot of my information actually has come from her. She is an uh, invaluable source of wisdom on uh, kimono and stuff for non-Japanese speakers. So I will absolutely have her stuff linked below to check her out. Um, but this looks like it was blind stitched pretty widely with a very large hem. So it looks like originally this uh, Juban was hemmed pretty narrowly right down here um, with a machine stitch uh, and then a larger section of it was folded up and blind stitched to bring up the hem. So potentially this was made it by manufacturing at one point and then was adjusted to the needs of the owner to make it shorter because Juban are supposed to be shorter than kimono. Or alternatively, it was sewn by someone who did this stitch just to secure the edge and make sure that it wasn't going to fray and then folded it up anyways. However, that's an unusual use of the fabric, I'm pretty sure, so that's odd. Also, it doesn't appear to be secured on the sides, which makes me think that it most likely was a sort of aftermarket uh, adjustment to make it easier for the person who purchased it to use. And then all of the hems are done pretty narrowly. I'm um, kind of a, a big seam person, so this might just be me, but these are all pretty thin. Uh, and all of these big seams are definitely done by machine um, with a little bit of a larger stitch, but nothing too insane. Let's take a look at the back. It looks pretty much same inside and out. There's nothing crazy going on with the stitching or anything. I am really fascinated by uh, just how haphazardly this uh, this collar, this Han Eri was sewn on, given that it's, you know, it's peeking out from under. And of course no one would see that. The, the uh, kimono would cover basically all of this, but I do think it's very interesting. Um, and you can see some of the, the sweat stains and stuff as well. Oh, okay, this is interesting. So on this sleeve, there is a little stitch holding the sleeve together uh, that was, I think, not on the other one? Oh, okay, okay. So it looks like there was a stitch previously on this one uh, and it came loose, but this is um, creating that hole for the hand to go through that uh, prevents it from going through the whole thing. So this, is sort of like the closure, but it also left it open completely. I have to wonder if this is like just an unusual thing for this, or if someone like modded the sleeves so that they'd be like this. I, I really don't know. If you know about kimono and you know why this is the way that it is, I would be very interested to hear about that because from what I understood this part was almost always closed up. But uh, I think that's pretty much it for this kimono. Um, let me test the sleeve to see if it has the same sort of... Um, oh, oh my goodness, okay. So <laughs> the stitching has pulled out on the side part of the way, uh, just like straight up ripped itself out. So originally it would have been closed here but it uh, it ripped all the way down to here. So that um, could have been a wear issue, I guess, or it could have been like a laundering issue or something, but it does look like this sleeve is also equally offset the way the other one was. The um, sleeve being offset is, I guess, a feature, not a bug. That's basically it for this kimono. 
Um, or this is Juban, I should say. Uh, I did try this on very briefly just to see if it would fit me and it absolutely does not. It is very, very small. It looks for like it was made for someone who's maybe five feet tall. Um, I am five six. Uh, to give you a demonstration, here is where the Juban sleeve sits on me. So, you know, maybe not my size. Hey everyone, so I am going to actually end the video here. Originally I was going to do the Furesode and the regular Juban uh, in the same video, but I'm realizing that these are going to be pretty long. So I'm going to end this one here and do a second part with the Furesode soon. Here's a little bit of a sneak peek of what's coming with that, uh, with that Juban. And thanks for watching guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!